Today, I'm here in the city doing some exploring. Large urban areas like this have a lot of people, shops, restaurants, different types of transportation, and heat. Why do areas like this get hotter than the surrounding suburban or rural areas? Let's find out together in this episode on the Urban Island Heat Effect. There are a ton of things to do in a big city, and it's pretty easy to get around with all the roads, sidewalks, bridges, and tunnels. But what is this building up doing to this local climate? Let's first recap a bit on climate. Climate is what the weather is like over a long period of time in a specific area. While weather can change in a few hours, a region's climate can take hundreds, even thousands of years to change dramatically. Urban areas like this develop what is known as a microclimate. So what's the difference between a climate and a microclimate? Climate refers to the average temperature and precipitation of a region, which is a large area. But a microclimate is a smaller area that differs from the surrounding regional climate or macroclimate. Often slightly, but sometimes considerably. This smaller area may be the size of a garden bed or as large as several miles, like this city. An urban heat island is a phenomenon that is best described as a city microclimate. When a city experiences significantly warmer temperatures than nearby rural areas. But how does this happen? When we're talking temperature, the first thing that we need to look at is heat transfer from the sun. The sun doesn't choose to shine more on urban areas. The sun's heat and light reach the city, country, forest, and ocean in the same way. Radiation from the sun can be either absorbed or reflected. About 50% of the radiation from the sun that reaches the earth is absorbed by the top exposed layer or surface, no matter what the surface is comprised of. The surface absorbs the sun's radiation and gains energy. That energy is felt as heat and warms the surface. The surface eventually releases some of this infrared radiation or heat energy to the atmosphere above. As the temperature of a surface warms, it will release more infrared radiation, regardless of what materials make up that object through convection and conduction. Convection occurs when air warmed by the surface rises upward, moving heat away from the surface. Convection from hot pavement is the reason that the air above the heated road on a summer day appears to shimmer. Conduction transfers heat to cooler air that directly touches the hot surface. Conduction can also transfer heat to water resting on the surface, causing evaporation, which leads us to the plant friends. One obvious way that plants help to reduce the temperature of a surface is through the shade they provide. Shade is great, but it's not the only way that plants help to cool off the surrounding air. Through a process called transpiration, water and nutrients are taken up by the plant roots from the soil and delivered to the stem and leaves as part of photosynthesis. Some of the water drawn up through the roots exits the plant through pores or stomata in its leaves, which we have trapped here. Don't worry, no plants were harmed in this demonstration. These droplets of water look like sweat. As this sweat evaporates, heat is removed from the plant and surrounding air, providing a cooling effect. When solar energy is absorbed by plants, much of the energy is released by transpiration instead of warming the plant and increasing that convection and infrared radiation release that we mentioned earlier. You can feel this cooling transpiration at work on a hot day. On a sunny day, go outside and find a patch of sidewalk right next to some grass. Feel both surfaces, or even better, get a temperature reading with an infrared thermometer. The grass should feel cooler on your skin than the pavement. Let's get a temperature reading to compare both surfaces. What a difference. You can see this on a large scale in these satellite images of Atlanta, Georgia. On the left, areas of the map that are dark green have dense vegetation, noted on the vegetation index. Notice how these regions match up with the blue regions, those with the coolest temperatures on the right. There is an obvious correlation between the absence of vegetation and higher surface temperatures. And that's mostly due to transpiration, but not completely. Let's look at another contributing factor to the urban island heat effect, the surface materials. If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. 
This concrete sidewalk is an impervious material. Water is not going to flow through it. No one wants rain dripping through a roof. So it makes sense that urban man-made structures are made with impervious materials. But there is a downside. Because water can't flow through surfaces like steel, brick, or cement like it can through a plant, these surfaces have nothing to cool them down. All the absorbed energy from the sun goes into warming the surface and releasing energy by conduction, convection, and radiation back into the surrounding air. On top of that, materials such as asphalt, steel, and brick are often very dark colors, like black brown or gray. A dark object absorbs all wavelengths of light energy or electromagnetic radiation and converts this into heat, so these objects get warm. In contrast, a white or lighter colored object reflects most wavelengths of light. Because this electromagnetic radiation is reflected and not absorbed, the light is not converted into heat and the temperature of the light colored object does not increase significantly. Urban heat islands are one of the easiest ways to see human impact. After all, sidewalks, roads, and skyscrapers wouldn't exist if humans didn't build them. And although these structures are essential to city living, the heat islands they create can be a problem for humans. So what's the big deal? Why is an area getting hotter than the surrounding region a problem? Well, urban areas often see temperatures rise to above 10 degrees hotter than the surrounding rural and suburban areas. Cities tend to be hotter than their surrounding areas at all times of the day and all times of the year. The hotter temperatures also require more energy to operate things like fans and air conditioners to keep things comfortable. This increased demand can lead to power outages, which is a serious issue. But there are things we can do to help cool these areas down. Some cities are lightening streets by covering black asphalt streets, parking lots, and dark roofs with more reflective, lighter gray coating. These changes can drop urban air temperatures dramatically, especially in the heat of summer. My favorite way to combat the urban island heat effect is by adding as many plant friends as possible. A great example of this is here in Clyde Warren Park, located right in the middle of downtown Dallas, Texas. This urban park was built right on top of the freeway. This five acre park added over 300 trees and countless other plants and serves as a big green roof, dramatically easing the urban heat island effect. The next time you're in a big city, look for these wonderful pockets of green. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Okay, three. I know, okay, gonna be, okay. The plane! Right in time for the plane. <laughs> it's like we're in the city or something.